Hello, my dear students, and welcome back to our course. Today we're going to have the lecture number two, and the topic of it will be project planning. But firstly, let's take a close look onto our daily plan. So, the main topic is project planning. I will give you some relevant vocabulary that you can use during planning or meeting a deadlines. And then we will work with a grammar. Today it will be continuous tenses. And in the end we're going to practice our pronunciation. So let's get started with the new phrases. The first phrase will be idiomatic, like to start from the scratches. Uh, it means to start from very beginning without using anything that already exists. And uh, let's uh, look how does it work in a sentence. Can we fix the current computer system? Or would it be better to start from the scratch with a new one? The second word is a forecast. Forecast is an estimate or prediction of a future happening or some condition that can happen. Like forecasting involves data and tools to make prediction about business metrics and developments. The third, like a phrasal verb, it's there off, which means to turn aside suddenly and leave uh, some course, direction or a purpose. It's easy to wear off in the wrong direction when you are in the middle of planning an activity. Next phrases, it's a crunch time. Crunch time, uh, software developers use to describe the long, stressful hours of work that are often required in the final period before a new product uh, will be launched. It's a crunchy time. We only have two more days to finish. The next, it's a scope creep. Scope creep we use when a project scope changes and the project work starts to extend or creep beyond that was originally agreed. In a sentence, it works like avoiding scope creep helps leader create a fair working environment for the team. Next phrase that I would like suggest you to use, it is a race against the time, which means to rush to meet a deadline or to be forced to do something very quick. It is erased against time to get the task done before Christmas. Next, it will be phrasal verb like carry out. Phrasal verb means that you should use it with a special sense. Just trying to explain and make a little remark. But continue. Carry out. To bring to a successful issue. For example, like to complete, to accomplish that can be used as uh, synonyms. We need to carry out more research on this task. Next one, in the nick of time. It means that you finish something at the last possible moment. It seems we've done it in a nick of time. Next, it's a bit the clock. In this block, everything connected with the time, as you see. So, bit the clock. Do something within the deadline or finish something quick before a particular time. Like the team managed to beat the clock on delivering its new system. The next our word combination is a frantic pace. It is a different things that are done quickly but in a very energetic but on the other side disordered way because there is a very little time, like the sprint has been at a frantic pace for the past four weeks. Next one, it's a virtual deadline. It is like, uh, you know, in a situation that we tell you you should got a month, but we need already this project yesterday. And in a sentence it works like it's hard to work well under the pressure of a virtual deadline. And the last for today will be oversee, which means to watch or organize a job or any activity to make certain that it is being done correctly. It will be more clear for you when you see example. Like a project manager should oversee different teams working toward different goals and with a separate work schedules. And as I promised you in the very first beginning, 
Today we're also going to discuss project planning. When you are trying to develop a plan to your project, firstly you should make like a skeleton and then add essential information. In our case the skeleton will look like the next. Firstly, you should write the priorities, the different things that you need to do or the things that can be done or what you want to do. Then you should answer on the four questions. Why, what, who and when. Let's take a look on example. Why? Uh, here we go. We are starting a new project to help businesses get rid of viruses. It means computer viruses, of course. Second question, what? We are working on a strike and firewall program. Who? Our best developers will be involved in the project. And when it's going to happen? We are going to present a working better version this summer. Then, when we have already skeletons and uh, answered on all questions, we should give more essential information to our plan. Like we should fill the gaps with task, responsibles, start and aid and data, and uh, in the last we should uh, put a status of our task. Let's take a look on the examples. In a task, it can be, for example, a set a kickoff meeting, developing a working better, or initiate a testing process. In the responsibles, it will be like uh, the name is or are responsible for a working better. Then, start and end data. For example, from 4th of July to 7th of the August. And uh, status of our task can be like this. It can be completed, it can be in progress, overdue, or even not started. Next, now we are continuing with our grammar. Today it will be continuous tenses. And as usual, we're gonna start from the present. Present continuous has its own markers to identify it into the sentence. Markers are the next, now and these days. Uh, we use present continuous when we are talking about actions at the moment of speaking, temporary or already planned actions. Let's take a look at the structure. Uh, first place will be taken by subject, then we are adding auxiliary verb. In the present time it is am, is, are. The third place will be taken by verb with ending ing. If we are trying to make a negative form, then one more time. First place is taken by subject, then auxiliary verb, then we end uh, a part not, and uh, add our verb with ending ing. When we are trying to make question, then we should put our auxiliary verb. I'll remember one more time, M is R on the first place, the second will be taken by subject, the third by verb with ending ink. Let's take a close look on our examples of usage. Uh, the first situation when we use present continuous in uh, the case when action is taking place right now, like Carla is preparing the briefing or I am looking for a Mr. Miller's phone number. The second situation when we can use this time, it is when action taking place for a limited period of time only. Like, Mr. Thompson is on a sick leave, that's why I am doing his job. Or three temporary employees are helping out this month. And the last case when we are using present continuous, it's we are trying to arrange the future actions. It means that you already made a decision and you know what's going to happen in a very close or not time. Like, I am meeting Mrs. Walker at 5 p.m. Or, Bob is doing overtime tomorrow. Next one, it's... Uh, past continuous. As there is no 
identifier of a time, but we use a past continuous in the process when the past interrupted by present simple, or in a process in the past with mentioned period of time or with the precise time mentioned. Let's take a look at the structure. The first place, of course, taken by subject, the second by auxiliary verb. In our case, to be in the past form, it will be was or were. The third place is taken by verb with ending ink. If we are trying to make a negative form, then first place, subject, second, our auxiliary verb, was or were, then we add part not, and uh, the last one in this structure will be verb with ink ending. If we are making question, then our auxiliary verb should be placed on the first place, like was for, then subject, and verb with ink ending. Let's look under examples and situation of use. So, past continuous can be used for actions taking place at a certain moment in the past. Like at two o'clock, Carla was preparing the contract. Or yesterday, I was looking for Mr. Miller's phone number. Also, we can use continuous time when action was happening simultaneously. Like while Clara was preparing her presentation, Tom was showing the customer around. Or while Sarah was looking for the documents, I was keeping the customer on a line. It means that uh, these two actions happened in the past during some time simultaneously in a one moment. The last situation when we can use past continuous is when action taking place over a long period of time in the past and then suddenly another a shorter action set in. Like, I was sitting in a meeting when my mobile suddenly ran. So, you just was sitting patiently. It's a long period of time. That's why we use continuous tense. And then something happened very rapidly, like mobile ran. It is a shorter action. That's why we use, in this case, past simple. The second example, when I came in, John was playing solitaire. So, uh, John was playing solitaire, it's a long action, that's why we're using past continuous, and the shorter action, when I came in, will be in a past simple form. The next, it's our future continuous. Future continuous also doesn't have any markers, but it's used to show the process in a future that interrupted by a present simple. And we use uh, this time to show the process in a future with a mentioned time or with a precise time mentioned. Let's take a look onto our structure. First place is taken by a subject, then we use our model verb, it will, shall, and auxiliary verb. So, will, be, or shall be. The third place is taken by verb with ending in. If we are trying to make negative form, then almost the same. First place is taken by subject, then we have will or shall, but he, here without be, just will, shall, then part not. And only on the fourth place we put our auxiliary verb be. Then we end verb with ink. So it will be subject, will, part not, be, and our verb with ending. If we are making question, then modal verb is uh, replacing on the first place. It will be will, shall, then subject, only then will be auxiliary verb be, and the last place will be taken by verb with ending ink. Let's look on the examples. There will be no many situations, only one case when we are using it. So, I will be writing different codes, or I will not be attending the program because of my busy schedule. Robin will be joining us at the meeting. I will be helping him to do the task, or 
I will be arranging all the necessary materials for the program. Great we are. In this example, we actually see uh, the process in the future with some time mentioned. Next one will be practicing of our pronunciation. As you already know, I will read it for you first time. You should uh, repeat after me and then we will try to make it quicker. Like I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for the ice cream. Great we are. The second one to practice our sounds of B. A big black bug beat a big black dog on his big black nose. Faster, a big black bug beat a big black dog on his big black nose. Great we are. Next one, it's you know New York, you need New York, you know you need unique New York. Let's try it to make quicker together. You know New York, you need New York, you know you need, you need New York. And the last one, very long, but we can try with you. Net not was short and some shot was not. So it is better to be short than not. Some say not wasn't short, but short says he shot not. Either the shot, shot, shot at not, was not shot, or not was shot. If the shot, 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 not, not was shot. But if the shot, 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 then shot was shot, not, not. However, the shot, 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 not shot, but not. Let's try to make it second time, but quicker. Net not was short and some short was not, so it's better to be short than not. Some say not wasn't short, but short says he shot not. Either he shot short short at not wasn't short or not was short. If the short 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 not, not was short, but if the short 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 short, then short was short, not not. However, the short 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 not short, but not. Yes, I hope we are coping very well, so it is time for our home task. I'll ask you for the next lesson to create your own project plan. You already have a structure of it in our presentation. Just take a look and try to fill it on your own. And the second grammar task will be to make five sentences for present continuous, past continuous and future symbols. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye-bye.